Okay, we're live. Welcome, welcome. I am Marcy Billen, and I'm a resident here in Norman, Oklahoma, and I am your guide for all things real estate adjacent here in Oklahoma. So before we get started, be sure to hit that like button if you haven't already. And I mean, you don't have to hit it right now. You can go ahead and hit that later on in the show if this helps you. When you do that for me, it just helps other people see this content, which helps me out a lot. That's all. That's the whole bit. So the other thing that you can do and you are welcome to do is to join our newsletter list. I have two newsletters that I put out every single month. So they're two weeks apart, which makes sense because there's usually four weeks in a month. They go out on Thursday mornings and they're typically all about real estate, um, what's going on in the community, etc. So as you may have guessed, I am a real estate agent here in the Oklahoma City Metro. And today we have a few different topics that we're going to discuss. So I want to get to weather, but I was going to wait a little bit on that. I'm not going to discuss it as the very first thing because usually some more people join us and I want to make sure everyone joins us for that conversation because it's always really interesting. <laughs> oh man, guys. And it like, is it Tuesday? Cause it feels like Thursday. So I have my, um, rye today. So I'm drinking whiskey. I usually have some sort of beverage whenever I'm chatting with you guys on this show. And whiskey is my drink of choice. It's just what I like. And uh, yeah, so cheers, you guys. It's always harder whenever I don't have a guest on with me. I am planning, let me adjust this really quick. I am planning to have a guest on with me next week. So that should be a lot of fun. And we will learn some really interesting things about um, Oklahoma on that one. So, oh, thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. Cheers. So you guys, as you're watching or listening, um, you can. <laughs> I thought it was Wednesday this morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It did feel like Wednesday. <laughs> Last week, that's where I was. I was like, is it Wednesday? <laughs> I had no idea what day it was at any given point. This week, um, I think I'm taking my day off this week on Thursday, so that should be exciting. Hopefully that actually happens because, you know, in real estate, sometimes it does not. But I want to make sure you guys get all of your questions answered today. So drop any questions if you're watching us live in the comments. And if it's about real estate, when I'm really not discussing like real estate uh, directly today, we're mostly talking like culture, weather, etc. So I want to answer your real estate questions like no matter what. So please ask your real estate questions if you have them. Um, that is okay. We can absolutely talk about real estate. Cheers, Debbie. I was thinking about you today doing some work on your behalf. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is something kind of dreary, um, but really important this particular week here in Oklahoma, and that is the Oklahoma City bombing. So um, quick cheers to those lost in the Oklahoma City bombing. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because April 19th, which is coming up very quickly, because today is April 16th. April 19th is the anniversary. It happened on April 19th, 1995. And um, it, so I was very young. I was in first grade when this happened. I know people who lost um, family members in the event for sure. And I also know people, especially young people, typically teenagers who don't even know about it which is a little bit concerning to me. I am a huge history buff. I love history. If you've watched any of my videos, you probably kind of got that because I just, I'd like to know why things happened and um, kind of the story of the world. So it's really important to me. So I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the Oklahoma City bombing. So basically, uh, this happened um, April 19th, 1995. 
It was the Alfred P. Murrah Building in Oklahoma City. And I'm going to share this one with you, I think. Um, I'm reading this article. Well, I'd read this article in the, uh, the Oklahoman about it. So I'm going to share my screen really quick and read, well, not read, but just share with you like what I've been kind of reading about this because I think it's important. So this is, of course, it's been nearly 30 years and a new documentary is actually being released today about the Oklahoma City bombing. And it was produced by Katie Couric and has a lot of different people on it, uh, some of which I've seen or met in person, which is cool. Uh, but this is really important history for Oklahoma in general. So, okay. Um, this is mostly about Kathy Saunders and she is Sanders Saunders. Her name is Sanders, Kathy Sanders. She is on the documentary. And one thing she brings up is that she lost her two grandsons. They were ages two and three whenever the bomb went off. And um, many children died that day. And if you haven't visited the memorial in Oklahoma City, um, whether you live here or maybe you need to take a day trip or as you're driving through, I really do encourage you to visit it. It is very like solemn. Um, it very much feels like the memorial at, in, um, at the Ground Zero at 9-11. So just know that going into it, it, it's a really interesting experience. The museum is very cool too. It's like rated one of the top 10 museums in the nation. So I do recommend that you go ahead and visit it if you haven't already. So one of the things here um, is that, of course, it's almost been 30 years. And this is one of her the things that this woman, Kathy, brings up is like, people don't know about it. And it concerns me that young people in Oklahoma don't know about it, but then across um, the country as well, this has been happening. So if you don't know anything about it, please go learn about it. I do think it's important. Um, if you don't live here, like, and you don't want to learn about it, like I get it, but there's a lot of different connections we can make across history with the Oklahoma City bombing. So um, there are a couple of books. <laughs> now, if you know me personally, you know I'm a book person. So, and I obviously always shoot in front of all of my books. I read a lot. So there are a couple of books that I've learned a lot about the Oklahoma City bombing from. I also did my undergrad in, <laughs> this is going to sound crazy. If you, I'm a realtor, right? My undergraduate degree is in international security studies. And most people look at me and ask me what that means. And it means that I studied the movement of militant groups for the most part um, and like failed governments. So that is what I studied in school. Um, how does that relate to my real estate career? It doesn't completely, of course, um, but it does make me decently good at research because that's mostly what I did in my undergrad. So reading is definitely part of that. So one of the books I really like reading about this or I have read that's really interesting is this book, Boomtown by Sam Anderson. This one is not just about the Oklahoma City bombing. It's about Oklahoma City in general. And if you like basketball, then that's the one you're going to want to read. Like it follows the story of the thunder, which is a really big deal for Oklahoma City. So read that one if um, you're at all interested in learning about some of the history for Oklahoma City. Really fascinating to me, at least. It was really fascinating. And then the other one that I was going to share with you guys that I read was this one. Um, it's called Homegrown and it's called Homegrown. And then the subline is Timoth Timothy McVeigh and the Rise of Right-Wing Extremism by Jeffrey Tubin. Now I listened to both books. I didn't actually read the physical copies. I tend to listen to a lot of nonfiction. It's really fascinating. I think this book was like a 16 hour listen and I finished it in like three days. It is true crime really interesting. It follows him from like birth all the way up to the bombing itself when he got arrested. And then all of the fascinating 
um, stuff that happened with his attorney and all of the documents that they went through. I mean, it was incredible. Like this book is incredible. So if you do want to read about it or listen to this, then I suggest that you do it. Jeffrey Tubin is also going to be on the documentary that is on HBO and being released today on April 16th. So if you don't want to read it, then uh, go watch the documentary. I have a feeling it's going to be really good. So that's my two cents on the Oklahoma City bombing. Thank you guys for listening. And hopefully you read one of the books or watch the documentary. And I want to know what you think after you learn some of those things. <sighs> Next. I'm going to have to have a cheers first, though. Woo. I kind of burned the tongue on that one. Goodness. Next is... I'm deciding. I'm deciding if we're going to go with tallest building. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the tallest building. Okay. All right. Talked about this before. You guys have seen this picture from me before, but basically what we're looking at are three buildings in downtown Oklahoma City that are 350 feet tall, each of them. And there's this big sign on them that says the boardwalk at Bricktown. And then in the middle is this even taller building. <laughs> this, whenever I read this article in the Oklahoman, I, I laughed really hard because this woman said what I was thinking. But basically, there has been a proposal that a, a 1,907 foot tall building will be built in Oklahoma City. Now, if you're not for sure, like how tall that is, let me just give you an idea. So the Devon Tower is the tallest building in Oklahoma City. And it kind of like I can see the Devon Tower. If I look out my window right now and over the end of my neighborhood, then I can see the Devon Tower. Cool. Whatever. So this building is going to be three times taller than that. <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, would make sense in New York City or Chicago, maybe. Um, yeah, it would make sense. But this is <laughs> this to me is going to be kind of an eyesore. So hold on. I have a, a question here. So, OK, so Juju says, I've always wanted to live in Oklahoma, love tornadoes. Where would be the best place to live besides Oklahoma City or Tulsa for storms? So like you want the storms. That's what she's, or they're saying, is you want the storms. Okay, cool. So if you're wanting storms in Oklahoma, I would say Western Oklahoma. So the one, and we're going to get into this a little bit more whenever I go into the weather here in just a second. Uh, so I'll hit on it, go back to the tower, then go back to weather. If you want storms, you got to live in Western Oklahoma. And the reason is because tornadoes like the flat because so like I'm from eastern Oklahoma or northeastern Oklahoma and it, it was common for tornadoes to just kind of break apart because like they the hills just do that to them. Um, the hills like break up the wind, they break up the pressure systems and they just kind of break apart. In western Oklahoma, there is nothing to break those things apart at all. So um, if you're wanting to kind of see where some of the old like tornadoes have been in the past definitely reading the book boomtown will help you kind of see that and they talk and go into a lot of um gary england's history he was like the father of modern meteorology and he is from oklahoma so he used to be the meteorologist before david payne and now david payne is like who everyone watches i don't like him very much <laughs> don't tell him i said so Okay. He's just like a lot, very dramatic, right? So I would say somewhere like maybe Weatherford. Yeah, the panhandle, um, they're asking, so like the panhandle are not quite that far. There ain't nothing in the panhandle. I mean, there are people that live there. I would say somewhere like Weatherford or that's one of the biggest cities in Western Oklahoma. Um, Elk City is one of the biggest cities in Western Oklahoma, very flat. It's all like kind of oil country like everyone kind of works in adjacent to the oil field not everyone but you know what I mean 
So somewhere flat like that, maybe Lawton, Altus, all of those areas are going to be um, going to have the storms. I think that you're probably looking for and also very windy. So that is my suggestion for you for sure. I'm going to go back to the tower really quick and then go right into weather after that. So for this giant tower, the 1900 foot tower, they have passed the zoning. So that means that they can go ahead and build it if they want to. This, <laughs> this person says, it's a bit tacky for us. We're not Las Vegas. This to me is an eyesore. And honestly, that was exactly my thought process whenever I saw this, because it's just going to be like the weirdest looking thing sticking out of the middle of nothing. Like Oklahoma City skyline isn't very big. So that's my concern here, but I understand what they're trying to do. Oklahoma City has definitely uh, grown by leaps and bounds. And I don't think that something along the lines of this is out of the question. I'm just concerned with like how big this thing is going to be and how they're going to fill it. And of course, people are concerned about tornadoes and earthquakes because we have both. We do have both. So yes. All right, moving on to weather, you guys. And I want to hear all of your questions about weather and what's going on with you. With weather, what concerns you have. Um, if you haven't experienced one part of our weather before, like if you want to know what that's like, then I want to answer that. So I'm going to remove that. Cool. Everyone's always concerned about tornadoes in the springtime. So why is it the springtime? And guys, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a meteorologist. I am just a girl from Oklahoma. And so springtime is when tornadoes happen. And there's a reason for it because tornadoes only happen when a warm weather system meets a cold weather system. And, um, that just doesn't happen in the summertime because there are never any cold weather systems. And it doesn't happen in the wintertime because there are never any warm weather systems. So spring is just like when that happens. Now, can you have tornadoes in December? 100%. But you still have to have the warm weather and the cold weather system. That is how this works. To my understanding. Now, I am not. Like I said, I am definitely not. Um, a meteorologist at all. But that is my understanding of what has to happen. Cheers, you guys. So with tornadoes, most of the time, they're small. And I thought about, I want to do a vlog for you guys. It's just so hard for me <laughs> whenever I'm doing videos and like at night because I'm just exhausted. Uh, but I was thinking of this for, from last year because we had a night where like the tornado that hit Norman in 2023. So it hit way South. And of course we're up for it. What kind of happens is like at the beginning of the day, as someone who grew up in Oklahoma, I can typically tell that a tornado is going to happen or something harsh. And this is going to sound nuts, but I was so happy Whenever I read this in Boomtown, whenever this guy was, or Sam Anderson was interviewing Gary England, as Gary England is like, yeah, you can totally smell a tornado. And I was like, yeah, you totally can smell a tornado, 100%. And Gary England said that it smells like fish. And it does. <laughs> it smells like fish. Um... I, I don't, he said why it has something to do with the barometer, like the pressure systems. Um, and I think the stillness sometimes, but it, it is pungent. Um, yeah. And then also right before, and that's like earlier in the day, you can begin to smell the, the storm coming in. This is a real thing. Like don't make fun of people whenever they say they can smell rain because you totally can smell it. The other thing that happens is it turns green outside. Like, of course, the grass is green, like, obviously, but but the air turns green. Like, it just has this green tinge to it, right? 
So that happens whenever there's a tornado. And you can feel it like in your body. People with arthritis uh, can feel it as well. And sometimes it's super windy. Sometimes it's not. I mean, it's going to be super windy during a tornado, but like to actually get the storm system in, like it just depends on how fast it's moving. The other thing is, and I wish I just use this on my phone. So I'm just going to hold up my phone like a crazy person. Well, and you're probably not going to be able to see it. I think I took some screenshots of it, but I have a, uh, an app on my phone and here I'm going to sh share it with you guys. It's called forewarn me for as in the number four, not the letter four. This is what it looks like. So I have a radar on the phone. And what I do is I take this and I zoom out so now I can see all of Oklahoma. And I'm looking over here, um, oh, sorry, over here, <laughs> where Oklahoma and Texas and um, like over near New Mexico, where they meet. And I'm looking for like the storms. And they form out there. I'm not sure why. I'm sure it has something to do with the Gulf Stream. I have no idea. Like I said, not a meteorologist, just a realtor. Learning how to not get, you know, unalived by a tornado. But they form out there in the panhandle. Typically, the panhandle of Texas, not Oklahoma. And um, they kind of gain steam as they go into Oklahoma. So as I'm watching them, the main thing, <laughs> the main thing I watch for is the shape of the storm. So if it's long and skinny, then there might be a tornado or several tornadoes. There's usually not just one. There's a lot at a time. There might be a tornado attached to that storm. If it's big and clumpy, like round, then I'm not really worried about it. And I don't know the reasoning. <laughs> I have no idea like why uh, I just know this is shape and what they're supposed to look like. Um, so they're, they're called a certain name. And for the life of me, it's like not coming up in my head, like what they're called, but if they're long and skinny, it's probably severe weather. If they're round and a little fatter chubby, then it's probably not that big of a deal for tornadoes. Cool. So then the other thing, and if you have more questions about tornadoes, please let me know because I get it. It's terrifying. So hail. Hail is another thing that happens in the springtime. And in what was it? April 21, we had that big hailstorm. Oh my gosh. Me and Handsome were in our house and it started hailing softball sized hail. And I have a short up on my channel. You guys can watch it if you go to my YouTube channel and it was, I thought someone was dropping bombs on the house. Like that's what it sounded like. It was horrendous. And honestly, like it's 2024 now. And sometimes you still see broken windows from this storm. Like it's insane, but it, we had hail on our couch because it busted through our windows. Like it was bad. It was not great. And it wasn't all of Norman that got hit. It was a specific part. And um, we all kind of like know that part by, you know, what happened. Let's see. All right. So you, uh, this uh, viewer says that they have a job opportunity in Gore. Is that a good place for storms? And how's the crime rate if you know? So for storms, I can probably answer that better than crime rate. Crime rate, go ahead and do your own research on that. So where is Gore? Like it's a small town, yeah? Gore, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Why is this not letting me? Okay. There it is. Oh, I mean, so Gore is directly south of, I mean, there's not even, I remember now. It's right by Vianne, which if you guys don't, don't know where Vianne is, it's in 
far southeastern Oklahoma. So no, it's not the greatest place in the world for storms at all. Like, is it going to get storms? Sure. It's, I know it's really beautiful down there. Like I'm kind of jealous because uh, it's very beautiful down there and I haven't really visited too much, but probably not the best place for storms in the world. Um, but it is going to be beautiful. Okay, Mark, more development will follow once this is built. Just curious. I moved here from out of state a few years ago. I first lived in Yukon in a brand new ideal home neighborhood. No storm shelter. Okay. Yep, I don't have a storm shelter either. And I live in an ideal home. Cool. Just moved to Southwest Oklahoma City, just north of West Norman. Home does not have a storm shelter. Brand new ideal home. Cool. So I think I uh, know where you're talking about. Sorry, Norman, should I be concerned? I don't know why ideal homes doesn't include storm shelters. Right. Um, so to install one in your garage, which you can do in an ideal home. And I've made several vid videos about the ideal homes neighborhoods. You can have one installed in your garage. Um, for a 3000 was the last amount that I saw. Um, and if you want a bigger one, I think it goes up to like five or 6,000. Also in my ideal home neighborhood, like people put those Oz storm shelters in the backyard and it depends if you're on a green belt or not because they won't let you put like a concrete structure in your backyard. If you're not on a, if you are on a green belt, meaning they want it to look like more brick like, uh, but and I, and I think those are eight to $10,000. So should you be concerned that you don't have a storm shelter? Uh, yes. I mean, it's going to be the safest, right? For you to have one. A lot. I, I often uh, see a lot of people have them um, because they want it for like emotional security, which I totally understand. Um, let's see. Mark said one more thing. So he said, I'm in native plains, which I know where that is. Yes. Literally in the path of the more tornado. So the thing is tornadoes are not animals. So they don't take the same path all the time. And the more tornado in 2013 and the more tornado in 1999 took two different paths. So yeah, you, to be safe, you would want to have one. Um, I don't have one. And the reason that I don't is like, it's, it kind of freaks me out <laughs> to go underground. Like that. <laughs> um, my parents have one, it's built into the foundation of their home and I never had to use it. And I lived there for what, like 12, 13 years. And that house, the house we had before that in Tulsa or in, in Claremore, we had a basement and I remember going into it once I was probably four years old. Um, the first time I took shelter for a tornado was in May of 2013 for the big tornado that went through more. And I wasn't at home. I was at work. So I was actually in the Newcastle Walmart. And then shortly after that, I took shelter at OU because I was living really close to OU. So yeah, to be the most safe, you would have a storm shelter. And, um, there usually is a time of day as well that tornadoes happen and they say that it's three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Now that is not like, you cannot time tornadoes. That is not how this works, but it is common for them to happen in the afternoon, which I think the 2013 one was at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, my husband handsome was in that tornado and um, he's at pickleball right now, or I'd have him tell you guys about it. But he was in the hospital because um, he worked at the hospital, <laughs> the one and more that that got destroyed. He worked there, and um, they took shelter in the basement, I think, or in the lab. Maybe it was a cafeteria. I honestly can't remember which room it was specifically, but that um, yeah, it wasn't rated as safe for tornadoes. So in my ideal home, what I do, if you want uh, to know, is I actually, and I live in an Inwood, which if you don't know what that means, just Google ideal home Inwood plan. Um, I take shelter in my utility room, which is my laundry room. So I 
gather up my cats and put them in their little backpacks and I put them in the utility room and then um, like we get in there if we have to. But honestly, it's more like I um, we turn on the TV and we don't watch the news very much. I don't like David Payne. I like the other one and I can't remember his name right now. David Payne is so dramatic and I can't, like, he makes me very anxious. So I watch channel four, I think. And so we turn it on. They tell us where the tornado is. So like last year they were like, oh, one's forming at Franklin. One's forming at Franklin. So I live close to Tecumseh. Franklin is, um, a mile away. And we were like, okay, that's not, that's not even remotely close. Cause that's where, how tornadoes operate. Like a mile is, it, it might as well be in a different country, <laughs> which sounds insane, but that's really what tornadoes are like. So that, um, they usually happen in the afternoon. They're pretty good about telling us where they are. Whenever the sirens go off, they go off for the whole town. Um, let me see. And just because it's going off for the, all of Norman, I mean, Norman is miles and miles across. So it just depends on like where the tornado actually is. Okay. Debbie had something to say. Matt and I are getting a garage shelter next week. You are correct. It's $3,000. Thank you for <laughs> helping me with that. Um, David P is almost disappointed when there is the tornadoes. Yes. He is so dramatic. <laughs> it's so much. It's so much. And I challenge you to look up David Payne drinking games because people definitely do that. TikTok is hilarious. Um, yeah. So David Payne is so dramatic and I cannot handle it. So Mark came back and said, thank you. Yes. Been wondering which room would be best to take shelter in. So the room that you want to take shelter in, if you don't have a tornado shelter, is going to be an interior room. Um, no windows if possible, because the storm like has a vacuum. Uh, the tornadoes have like a vacuum thing happening with them. So it can suck you out a window. And uh, then you can cover yourself with something heavy. Usually they say a mattress, like if you can fit one in. They also say to put on helmets. So if you have bike helmets, you would put one of those on and you would keep water in there because you might be in there for a while. Like if your house gets torn down by a tornado, which is horrible, it looks terrible, then you it may take a while for them to get to you. Um. Whenever you do have a tornado shelter, my understanding is that you tell the fire department that you have one and um, go ahead because they they can like mark it or like put it in their system and know that you have one. So that way they can find you if you're in your garage because that's the whole thing, right? Like you're underground and you might be there for a little while because just because you're down there doesn't mean something's not on top of you. <laughs> and so you can't get out if if that's the case, people put a hand crank radio down there, um, or wherever you are, hand crank is the best because you may not have electricity that usually goes out first. Let's see. You might want some snacks, um, any medication that you would like. Um, maybe your, your go folder, you know, that folder with all of your, like, um, your passport and your, uh, like your social security card and all that stuff. You could have your, your go folder in there. Of course, my cats have a go bag because they have to have their items as well. <laughs> okay. What did you say? And uh, this is another viewer, Juju again. So in the Midwest was always told if you don't have a basement, lay in your tub with a mattress over you. Yes, absolutely. Lay in your tub with a mattress over you. And the reason I don't lay in my tub is because it's on an exterior wall. Otherwise, I would totally do that. But yes, laying in your tub with a mattress over you with a helmet on is usually what I hear people say. So absolutely, that is what I would do. Both of my tubs are on exterior walls, so I don't. But I get what you're saying. Absolutely. That's a good spot to be for sure. Awesome, guys. Okay. Weather. I feel like, okay, I was talking about the tornadoes, what to do which channel to watch. 
um, what app to get. You guys get that app. It's so good. Like Apple weather knows nothing. It knows nothing. You need to get the forewarn weather app with the number four, not the letter four. Quick drink. Or the word, whatever. Okay, so we covered tornadoes. We covered a little bit of hail. If you even think it's going to hail, put your car in the garage. Oh, my God. It Like that day that it hailed so bad, it was like a war zone outside because people didn't know. And we had our cars in the garage, thank goodness. But most people did not. Put your car in the garage. Very important to do during the springtime. Clean out your garage. Um, most um, cities in Oklahoma have a spring trash pickup, like a big trash pickup, so you can clean out your garage at this time to get your vehicles in there. And if you don't have a garage, go on Amazon and look up hail cover for car and get one. <laughs> it is so worth it. It is so worth it. Even if you think you look like a noob putting that up on your car outside, it is totally worth it. And if you don't have that um, or can't get one for some reason, then thick wool blankets, especially moving blankets, you can drape those over your car and it will protect from most of the damage. Most of the damage. Okay. Please link your hailstorm video. I can't find it. Okay. I can't do it while I'm live. I don't think but um, I'll link it in the comments after we get done talking because I don't think I can do it live. Oh, and you're, you're on Facebook. Yeah, I can do it there um, here in a second. So yes, I'll link that for you. Oh, I didn't get one. I'm just going to be honest with you. I was in the shower whenever it started. <laughs> I was in the shower and I thought I was going to die naked <laughs> because I was in the shower. It was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> Oh, it sounded terrible. And it lasted a good like few minutes, which is a long time for a hailstorm. Did a lot of damage. So the other thing in the springtime is the wind. Man, two years ago, the wind must have blown for six weeks, like 15, 20 miles an hour for six weeks. It was horrible. If you're living in Oklahoma now, um, then you know last night you thought your house was going to blow away. That's what it felt like. It was awful. And I'm sorry, but Oklahoma wind is a thing. Um, just like Chicago wind is a thing and you're going to have to get used to it. It's the way it is. Springtime is especially bad. It usually dies down at night, but it did not last night. It was extremely intense wind and it was making something like tap on my pergola outside. And I thought I was going to have to climb on that roof in order to nail it down. It was terrible. So wind is definitely a thing. Make sure like your cushions and stuff on your patio, any plants you have on your porches um, that, you know, they're going to get dried out really fast because of that, but also they could get knocked over. So you don't want that to happen to your poor plants and, you know, probably your animals too. I'm watching my cat sleep on my chair, thinking like if she had to go outside, she would just disintegrate immediately because there's no way she could handle herself <laughs> being outside the poor thing. So man, you guys have had so many good questions and comments today. Thank you. So I have a couple more things. If you don't have any more um, hail or you know, weather questions. Uh, Mark says that the wind is no joke, especially with the dust. Yes, the dust makes it ex especially bad. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did like a solo trip. I tend to do like a solo trip or two a year. I did a solo trip out to Quartz Mountain, which is one of the state parks. And I went in April, probably about this time, and the wind was blowing so bad. I had this really great picture of my hair just going crazy because I was just driving around being myself looking at things, the historical sites. Like there was one town that like there was a sign for and it was from like 1920. They're like, yeah, there used to be a town here and then it got blown away and no one ever moved back. And I was like, cool. <laughs> That's legit. But there's a lot of towns uh, out in Western Oklahoma, especially like that. So yeah, good stuff. If you guys have more um, weather questions, just let me know. So I had one more thing to cover with you guys, and this is specifically for Norman. And it's like a sad thing to me, for sure. I'm not, I'm not happy. 
So Norman has three library buildings. Um, the central library building, the west and the east. I live closest to the central because of where I live in central Norman. And it has closed indefinitely, which is really unfortunate. So I'm going to share this with you. Um, oh, I already am. I just didn't put it back on. So the Norman Public Library Central closes indefinitely while the city's the city planners are like the city leaders establish a remediation plan. So this library opened in 2019. Before that, it was in this old crappy building. It was terrible. And I love the library, you guys. Obviously, I love books. And like there were just so many cool things in this library. And it won awards for having the coolest um, architecture. And you can sit in these amazing rooms and overlook like the railroad tracks and downtown Norman, like it's amazing. And now it's closed because of mold, because there were leaks and now it's closed. So the Norman public central library will close indefinitely. So according to the press release, the damage to the facility is extensive and severe. So obviously they spent millions of dollars building this facility and then there were leaks and then they spent almost a million dollars trying to remediate or get rid of the mold and the leaks, and it didn't work. So now they're going to have to go find money somewhere else, which is probably going to be um, through the court system. They're going to have to sue whoever um, did the work on the architecture or the building itself. That's what's going to have to happen. It's really sad. But some of the things that were in the library, um, like the... What's it called? The, um, what is it called? Um, Pop-up libraries are on Santa Fe, which is where like Norman City Municipal buildings are to begin with. So the, um, they, they have like labs where you can go in and, you know, do the, like the laser cutting and things like that. So that's what's going, that's where you have to go to access that material. And of course, the West Library and the East Library are also open. And um, those, so the East Library is beautiful. The West Library is an old border, so it's not as beautiful, but you can um, get your books there as well. So Mark says, library here in Southwest Oklahoma City is awesome. It is awesome. I love that library. I was surprised at how modern and nice it is. I just read about the Norman Library today. That's too bad. Yes. Um, the library system here in Oklahoma City is so good. So if you don't have your library card yet, go get it. Um, the main thing I use it for <laughs> is for getting digital books so I, that I read on my Kindle or listen to. And that's how I read Homegrown whenever I was talking about the Oklahoma City bombing. But yes, it was super sad. And then, um, yes, it is really sad that the library is closed. It was such a cool building and such a great place to hang out. I do hope they can do something, right? to get this remediated, but I know how long the court system takes and we know that it could be quite some time. But I I need to visit the East Library East Library because honestly I've never been to it before. It's um way out in East Norman, which is great because there's so many houses out there and so many people that live there, but I need to go and visit it. The way I order my books is I get on my app. Oh Elisa's here. I know she got her storm shelter installed today. So that's good. Um, so I use this app. It's called Pioneer Library System or PLS. And it's signing me in with my face. <laughs> and then I just get, um, I look through whatever books I need and get the book ordered or put on hold. And um, then I go pick it up from whichever library location I choose. If I'm ordering a book that's an actual book, and then if it's Kindle or something, then I use Libby. And then there's also Hoopla, which you can order books on, but you can't read them on your Kindle device, which sucks. And then you can also get um, Canopy, which is with a K. Canopy with a K. 
and watch all the documentaries your heart desires. So Elisa says that she's on day one of three days. So Elisa is having Oz install her storm shelter. How big of one did you get? How big was the storm shelter? Because I know there's um, like a four person. I think there's a six and a 12. We'll see if she answers us. She might not, which is fine. Um, one of my friends has a 10 person Oz and it's quite large. I need to go over and take some video at his. She's probably doing something else. There it is. So she said it's five by eight inside. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, here's what I tell people when you're installing one and they say, oh, you can fit five people in here. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, you can probably fit like 10 because let's be honest, when the threat is there on your life, like you're going to stuff people in like that's just how it works. So that's what I would say. So, yeah. Okay, guys. And yes, you said the house that you're buying. This is another buyer that I have. The house that you're buying will already have one. That is so true. So true. Awesome, guys. I am so happy that all of you joined me today. And please go ahead and sign up for my newsletter if you haven't. And if you have any questions for me, you can email me, which you can find my email in the description. Or I have it up on screen for you as well. So look in the show notes or the description. And then, yeah, I will see you guys later. Thanks so much. Bye-bye now.